Let's stay with the Paul Temple, and we're going to show you a, a transition play and a restricted area play contact at or above the restricted area. So I want you to, as this play is being run, I want you to stop it with 21 seconds on the shot clock. And now the lead at this point, again, the primary defender is is now beat baseline. I think Temple's playing the zone here. But they, there's a baseline the, that defender's beat. So now the lead must go ASAP to the next defender, the next place where she can get hurt, which is the big in the lane who's going to come over and help on this play. And she's got to look to see legal or not. So now as I look at this play, and I stop it at 20 at the contact, number one, from a restricted area standpoint, I can see that the heels are above the line. Even if they're not in contact, if they're above the line, then that's considered restricted area, and that would be a secondary defender. Now, if you're working in a game without restricted area, I think if you look at this play, the defender is still fails to get to the position in time to legitimately make that a player control offensive foul. So that's a, this play to us is a block regardless. But now I like the projection here by the lead. Good, good job of signaling the block as a pre-signal and then immediately pointing to the restricted area, which basically is communicating to a crew that, look, I have a block, and the reason I have a block is the defenders in the restricted area. But if we look at this play, I think we'll realize that it's also, regardless, restricted area or not, uh, it would be a, a defensive block. 